you'll bow, and then you'll come up here. Okay. Testing. All right. So open this on. Do you need this? Do you think? Maybe we uh, should. Yeah. Probably. I'm going to put this out because it's a little on the taller side. You could bend down, but it's because some of it's a little shorter, so we'll need it. Just read. Yep. A reading from the book of Numbers. With their patience, worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us from Egypt to die in this desert where there's no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. Do you want me to do it again? No, oh, you're good. Okay. okay. So then when she's finished, then you'll just wait and we'll both leave at the same time. Mm -hmm. Alright, so we'll we'll Can we start to the side over here? Yeah, you do, or over there. Either way. I don't know if I need the stool. Yeah, you'll just, we're going to leave it out because it's really heavy and a few of those people are going to need it. So you'll just be really tall today. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. And do I put this in? Either way. If you want your own, you can. This is your... In punishment, the Lord sent among the people seraph serpents, which bit the people so. <coughs> Hold on, sorry. I need water. Uh, there might be cups back there by the sink. Okay, sorry. Right, but let's practice. Let's practice you all stepping down. So you all need to come up and down together. So then let's pretend you finished. You're gonna come down with Ryan, and you're both gonna go down together. All right, my petition people. And Mila, you want to check in the back? Perfect. All right, I need Emery, Riley, Morgan, you three. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to come. Again, so stand, sit right here. Leave this up here. Okay, so Riley. Four. Double your heels. And the real thing, so it's just gonna have to be nice and loud and proud, okay? All right, so then you'll go to the back of the line. Emery, jump back up here. Four. Okay, now you go to the back of the line. Morgan. Four. Okay, now you go to the back of the line. Monte. Four. Okay, and then Kenzie, yours is right here. Four. Okay, and then you go down. And then all of you will come down together. Bell is going to be nice and loud. Time for church. All right.
Good morning. Uh, please stand and uh, join us in singing Gather Your People, number 837. wait till all the books are done. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. So welcome back to Mass this morning. This is a red outfit, obviously. It's a feast day. It's a feast of the exaltation of the Holy Cross. Jesus died on the cross, and so we celebrate, in a sense, that death on that cross by commemorating the, the way that Jesus died for us. As we begin the Liturgy of God's Word, then once again, as we always do, we should pause and reflect upon our need for God's love, especially that love we refer to as mercy, pardon, and peace. So let's think of those things we've done, we should not have done. Let's think of those things we should have done but did not do. We call them sins, failings. And let's go before the Lord now to ask for pardon, for mercy, and for peace. And Lord Jesus, because we continue to sin against you this morning, we cry out, Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us all, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, who willed that your only begotten Son should undergo the cross to save the human race, we pray, grant that we who have known his mystery on earth may merit the grace of his redemption in heaven. We pray this through the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, our brother, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So I'll be seated now. Let's listen to God's word. And I'll invite our reader to come forward. A reading from the Book of Numbers. With their patience worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us to, from Egypt to die in this desert, where there is no food or water? We are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent among the people seraph serpents, which bit the people so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people and Lord and said to Moses, Make a seraph and mount it on a pole. And if any of, and if any of who have been bitten look at it, they will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole. And whenever anyone had been bitten by a serpent, they looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. We know what this is. hunting bow. It's a big one. They're usually much smaller. This bow is older than any of the youngsters in here and some of the adults. This is about 40 to 45 years old. Yeah, it's not strung, by the way, because it, it would be the other direction. And Father Tony has five hunting bows. They have about a hundred pound pull each. Do you think you can pull a hundred pounds back? Don't think so? He says, yes, you say no. Maybe, we'll see. But no, this is too old. If you probably strung this bow, it might break, it's so old. The reason I have this is a lady down in Southern Kentucky Missions by Lake Cumberland gave this to me because her husband, uh, she was a widow, her husband had died like five years earlier, and he didn't make this bow, but he made all the arrows that he shot. He made the scabbard, quiver that they have for the arrows. I understand you have an archery club here, right? Are you any good? Some teachers are going like this. I don't see any, sir. Well, Father Jeff over at St. Patrick used to challenge me to different things. He's the pastor there. He challenged me to a pepper eating contest. He lost. He challenged me to a mushroom eating contest. He lost. Then he challenged me to an archery contest. And he had one point more than I did. And someone said, did you let him win? I said, my daddy always told me if you don't let him win sometime, they won't play with you anymore. Okay. <laughs> this is a sign for me. Whenever I look upon this, I remember my time down by near Lake Cumberland back when I was, had more hair on my head and all that. It's a sign, but it's also a symbol. Now, that's what I want to talk to you a little bit about today. There's a difference between a sign and a symbol. You say, what? Well, what is if you have like an eight-sided thin metal piece of metal at a four-way intersection and it has S-T-O-P on it, what does that mean? Does it mean go? Does it mean ease into the intersection? What's it mean? It means stop. Now, those of you who want to get older, get your first driver's license and all that, you better remember this. You go through a stop sign in front of a police officer, you can get arrested. Okay. That is a sign. It can't mean anything else but S-T-O-P. Now, anybody here a fan of U of L? Okay. Anybody here a fan of UK? Yeah, I think the UK got it. All right, hands down. You've seen the image like the cardinal. You see the image of the wildcat. Now, is that a sign? Yeah, but it's more of a symbol. Why is it a symbol? A sign means only one thing. A symbol has unlimited meaning. Look at the cardinal bird. It means the ball team, right? Which team? Basketball, football? Either one, both, both. It also means the science that they have in classes. That means the education you get from there. That means all the different opportunities that the U of L school offers you. Same way with U of K. Boys, young men, young women, a sign means only one thing, a symbol is unlimited. Today we're talking, celebrating a symbol, the cross. Now, see up there a little cross with a picture of the, the uh, corpus of Jesus on it? We have really dolled that up. 
According to the historians, the cross that Jesus died on wasn't like that at all. It's like an old tree. They had a branch, they put a branch, he was probably kind of crucified something like this, you know. They crucified him on a tree. We made it into a nice symbol, cross. We sign ourselves with the sign of the cross. But the cross is not just a sign, it's a symbol. What's it mean? It means that Jesus, who died on that cross, stood for something, the good news, the gospel. And all the different things that Jesus taught, that sign, that symbol, tells us there's a lot more to it than just Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, what does it have to do with you guys? Well, let me say this to you today. We were celebrating the, the feast of, the, well, really it's the, uh, supporting the whole image of what the Holy Cross is. Huh? But let me tell you this, you guys, every one of you here, no matter how young, no matter how old, you are a symbol. You go to, uh, say, the archery team. You, uh, you may hear, are you in the archery team? You're not? She's on the archery team? All right. You go to the archery, next archery shoot. Okay? People are going to look at you and say, oh, she's from St. Gabriel. Okay, and if she does something nice, they're going to say, hey, good St. Gabriel. But if she does something she shouldn't do, what are they going to say? Bad St. Gabriel. So what you do, whether it's archery or any other activities you go outside with other schools, you are representing this school and this community. And how you act will show them whether you are a true symbol of the good things that happen or just a sign of the bad things that happen, okay? So the Holy Cross that we celebrate today is a sign and a symbol. When we have Eucharist up here just in a few moments. Someone said, well, that's just a sign. No, it's more than that. It's the presence of Jesus. Jesus promises it to us. It's a symbol in the sense of what a symbol is. It represents a reality that's behind it. So the cross is a symbol that represents Jesus Christ, who stretched out his arms. The Eucharist represents and actually is the body of Christ that you will receive so that you might become the body of Christ. You receive the symbol to become a symbol. Just keep that in mind. Everything that you do today that's not going to be on the up and up, it's not going to be on the good side of the counter, that basically shows that you're more of a sign than a symbol. You're limited. On the other hand, if you show the goodness of what you've been taught, the formation, moms and dads and teachers here, that shows that you're growing in not only your math and your languages and social skills and even archery, but you're growing in the possibility of becoming a person, a child of God that God wants you to be, okay? So today I just want you to think about the difference between a sign and a symbol. A sign is very limited. A symbol is infinite. And everyone here again, you are a symbol of the kingdom of God and what that can mean for the world. So as we continue this liturgy, put this old bow away before it breaks. Again, I have a crossbow too. You ever, anybody here have a crossbow? Like the old Robin Hood stuff? That's kind of neat. As we continue our liturgy, let's ask God to give us the strength and the courage to venerate the cross. Yes, yes, yes. But not just that stick of wood, that tree that Jesus died on, but who died on it? Jesus. Who stands behind that symbol? Who is the reality? And let's try today in our own lives, in class and beyond class, even at home, on the home front, in your groupings that you go to, to represent what it means to be a child of God and a student at St. Gabriel and a, hopefully someone who hopes for the coming kingdom of God. Okay? All right, let's bow our heads in prayer just for a moment, asking God for that grace, and then we'll continue with our Mass. And I'll put this down before I break it. Okay, let's all stand now. You've heard God's word which is a symbol of his presence to us, more than a symbol, God is present to us in his word. We've reflected upon that word. 
Now we go to the Lord God in prayer to ask for our daily needs, and I'll invite our petitioners, who are going to be helping us with petitions, to come forward at this time. And Father God, listen now as we raise to you our needs this day in prayer. Gift us with what is needed so that we too might be able to profess through our own lives the coming kingdom of God. For all members of the church, may Christ continue to strengthen, strengthen us to love as he loved. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may the Lord grant them hearts for true sacrificial services. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, may the healing power of Christ be upon them and bring them comfort and reprieve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here, may the Holy Spirit Increase in us a spirit of conversion and openness to his work in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they enjoy eternal life in heaven and behold the face of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our special prayers, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's add a petition there if we would as well. Let's ask the Lord God once again to continue to help Father Jason in his program. Uh, he did contact us recently. He sends his love and affection for everybody here and thanks you for your prayers and cards. He'll be with us shortly, hopefully, when he finishes his program. So Lord God, we ask you to help him succeed in his program and come back to us so that I can retire once again. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> Loving God and Father, all gifts given unto our care are given that we might help build up the kingdom of God. Help us this day to live our lives to be a true symbol of Christ's presence in this world, so in need of Christ, that all that we do and say might give you honor and glory, for you are indeed Lord and God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So I'll be seated now as we continue with the canon of our Mass. Together we pray that this our sacrifice may be found pleasing and acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice from our hands to the praise, the glory of his name for our good, the good of all of his holy church. Father God, may this oblation, this gift we pray, which on the altar of the cross canceled the offenses of the whole world, cleanse us from all of our sins. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. Let us all now give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you place the salvation of the whole human race on the wood of the cross, so that where death rose, life might again spring forth, and the evil one who conquered on a tree might likewise on a tree be conquered through Christ the Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. Father, may our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as together we all acclaim. Neil, if you would. Father God, you are indeed holy, and all that you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things, and you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Father, we humbly implore you, by that same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus the Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was finished, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Father, as we celebrate this memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy, this living sacrifice. Father, look, we pray upon the oblation, the gifts of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, we pray, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Father, may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint 
Gabriel, our patron, and all the patrons, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, Lord God, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church here on earth <clears throat> with your servant Francis, our Pope, Shelton, our Bishop, with the order of bishops, with all the clergy, with the entire people you have gained for your own. And Father, listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, we pray, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. stand if you would. The Lord Jesus teaches as the word of God verifies we now dare pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity. In accordance with your will, you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let's take a moment now if we will let's share that peace of Christ with those around us, okay? Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let's stand and pray now. Father God, having been nourished by your holy banquet, we beseech you to bring those you have redeemed by the wood of your life-giving cross of your Son to the glory of the resurrection, where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God, bless us always, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.